life is about having fun. I'm often talking to you about finding the way to make sure that your body is healthy so that you can do the things that you love doing. I'm gonna share with you guys today. We weren't planning to buy any new long boards this summer. Came across this board and I'm sharing it with you guys because I also wanna talk about how great it is to be able to do things with my body and to live life the way that I wanna live it. So eating healthy has helped me to be able to have fun and do things today that I couldn't do when I was in my 30s because in my 30s, my joints hurt. And I was afraid that if I fell, that I would be like laid up for a long time. Eventually I got over that fear and just started doing things because it kind of clicked in my head. If I don't live my life, then I'm just gonna be stuck and always wishing I were doing things rather than actually doing things. Let's talk a little bit about the benefits of eating well and the great fun it allows me to have. The wheels aren't new, I, I'm repurposing those, but the trucks and the board are new. And I wanna show you the artwork on the back. It's just beautiful. And I know when you're riding, you don't actually end up seeing the artwork. It's nice to have, but at the same time, what's the point of having it? But just really, I feel so good when I have like a beautiful board that I know is gonna give me a lot of pleasure to play with and just have fun on. Now what's really cool is that Pat bought a new board too. So we're gonna get to go riding together. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to put some shots from that in this video. And I wanna talk a bit more about like the healthy things that Pat and I do to afford us the ability to ride these boards and not be afraid of getting hurt. Okay, that was a great workout. I rode further than I think I've ever ridden, which means that the board does what it's supposed to do because I was able to ride all the way home from the office and then back to the office. The ride to my home was actually relatively easy. A lot of it's downhill. The ride back here was a bit more hardcore and I'm exhausted right now and I have to get back to work soon. So, <laughs> but I have a whole hour so I can relax and get myself ready. Now, the thing I wanna point out is that I feel great. So even though I'm a bit tired because it was a really long ride, it took me half an hour, no, it took me like 35 minutes to get home but it took me like 40 minutes to get back to the office because a lot of it was uphill. And, um, but the ride was so great. I'm so glad that we bought this board. We're going to talk about other things in this episode. And looks, I'm excited because we haven't had a patch hot in a long time and I'm going to corner him and we're going to do this thing. <laughs> so now I'm wishing that I would have brought a tripod or something, but mm -hmm. we're going to try to go through this like this. This is a very casual patch hot today. <laughs> And something that Pat brought up that I thought was super interesting was the idea that before he met me, he had never actually longboarded or skateboarded or anything. I'm curious how this crazy lady got you to get on a board. <laughs> <laughs> really? You asked that question? <laughs> yeah. Like, why did you do it? Like, I mean, like, were you not well, scared or I don't know? Like, was it just not? like, like, just was so easy? Like, just like, okay, no problem. No, uh, it's, for sure, I've always been easy to jump like on on a friend's like wagon. But like my my vehicle when I was younger was more like bike. I had a bike and I was going everywhere like uh, on bike. So people, if you know, like Montreal, we have uh, there's a lot of bridge and my cousin was living South Shore. So I was leaving from north of Montreal completely on a bike and going like uh, for oh. an hour, an hour and a half ride, like to, uh, hour and a half. to where we was. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, it was an hour. I think it was an hour. Oh yeah, but never like actually longboarded or uh, or snowboard. Uh, not snow longboarded or skateboarded and and snowboarded the same thing. Like you got in, me into all of that. Okay, so years ago. You were riding like an hour and a half to go see friends or cousins mm -hmm. or whatever. I yeah. can tell you that I never did that. I, yeah. I was too lazy. I would get a ride. So health-wise, yeah. would you say that you were confident in yourself that when you were jump on a, this new device that it would be easy? Was it easy? Was it? How did you feel your health well, was when we started doing this? Well, when we started, no, our health was not that good because, like, we're not uh, we're not doing uh, we're not doing good. Like, uh, we were eating a standard American diet. We were eating a lot in the restaurant. Pizza was our favorite thing. So, health was. Is it your favorite thing? Too? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But I think like the long board. Uh, how long have I had my my Sims? Like, or maybe we we decided to get a board at the same time. So at I sport, it, sports expert. So he doesn't even remember. No, I yeah. was walking through Sports Expert and I saw the board that I bought. I bought it 
I took a picture of it. I showed it to him and said, hey, they're on special. And then oh, he went yeah. about <laughs> and then bought one. Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't remember this part, but I guess you learned to ride with me. Yeah. Because I, I was so. I already knew how to ride. But yeah, I guess mm-hmm. you learned to ride with me. Yeah. Okay, you, well, I can say you picked it up really fast because I don't even remember you learning to ride. Yeah, yeah. I even remember that early, early on we went riding and you rode down like this super huge hill. And I'm just thinking to myself now yeah. that you even tried that hill and you didn't know how to ride. I'm impressed. Okay. So I remember actually one thing that uh, you got me back into, but I played a lot like when I was younger, was badminton. So I think the first oh I God. think the first year or second year we played badminton together. Uh, so even though like our our health was not the best we're still active yeah we were Ooh, i would yeah. say that so when i started playing badminton my health was much better um because i started playing i was like mid-20s so i still had the knee issues mm. but my my health was better and after my daughter so like because we met we our kids were eight or something or i don't remember mm-hmm. how old they were but yeah. they were they were quite young eight yeah okay so when we met and our kids were eight we went i went back to badminton because i hadn't played in a long time Mm. and that was challenging i i will acknowledge it was challenging um i was not in the greatest of shape and so we we did play for how many years i think we played Uh, 22 years i think yeah Yeah. Yeah. and then work got crazy for me anyways work got crazy and i wasn't able to be there enough to justify Mm. paying to be there but again like that's a good point like uh, it's i feel sometimes it's a um an easy accessible excuse to stop doing it because every Work. time yeah. i yeah every time i had a membership to the gym because i had a few tries even before like uh, uh doing better on on the the nutrition front uh so i had a membership uh, to the gym that i had for eight nine months before work got crazy i was doing spinning uh, classes before work okay. got crazy <laughs> okay it was always i think it's very important to to consider moving and and doing physical activity as important as you work even though sometimes it's hard to put in your schedule but like uh, it's it, yeah it's important to, to consider it as important i think I want to say that, although it's true, badminton fell away because of work, and also my, my daughter. Because when, like, when I when yeah. I when she was born, I stopped going for years. I tried to go back, but then work would get in the way. Mm-hmm. So hmm, because I did have a babysitter, so I wasn't like I couldn't get there. Mm-hmm. I could get there. My problem though is that I would allow work to be an excuse, like mm-hmm. you're saying. Mm-hmm. But I will add, my daughter was a big motivation for me to move mm. because we played a lot so like i would take her outside to play we would play like so we played a lot so even though i wasn't going to badminton i was still playing and still i was exhausted and taken out by badminton like mm. when i started back to badminton that first year with you oh, yeah. it was insane <laughs> like i'd have to play a game and then i'd have to take a break between games like i couldn't just be on all the time which i was able to do before yeah. i do think that poor health is something that we ignore because mm. we're not even aware it's happening had I not played, I don't think I would have realized how out of shape I was. And then when mm-hmm. I went to try to play and realized like I can't keep up, that was a big eye opener for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the same thing with when we started skateboarding or longboarding. Sorry, again, comparing longboarding back then to longboarding now, mm-hmm. like at the beginning of the season, it used to kill me the first few times we went longboarding. Mm-hmm. Like I would, we would longboard for like half an hour, and then I was done mm-hmm. for the day. Yeah. And now we can start the season. And we can go for like an hour ride, and I'm okay afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Like I might be might be perspiring a bit, but I'm not dying. Yeah, we did that. Like even uh, was it like two weekends ago? We went downtown on our Swifties, like so the, those uh, scooters, like adult kick scooters, not the electric scooters. And we rode for like a, probably an hour, like around in like um, your your neighborhood where you grew up. So yeah. And it was easy. Yeah, it was it, easy. It wasn't yeah, hard. And yeah. it was hot as heck. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was it still, was e- the ride was easy. Was it, it was hot as heck. When we finished, like, we wanted some water, mm-hmm. but we were fine. Yeah. And we didn't go to bed any earlier. Yeah. It was a great night. So, interestingly enough, like, restarting badminton, playing all the, the longboarding we were doing, like, um, did you get, did you ever get your weight under control? So, no. That, mm-hmm. Okay, so the horrible part is that all the energy we put into those activities and both of our weight was still high, yeah. right? And then putting energy into eating right, and we both improved our weight. Yeah. 
And I've been at goal weight for three and a half years. Yeah. And we're not moving more than we you were moving before. I'm moving less yeah. Yeah. because honestly, I'm working too much. Mm-hmm. And I shouldn't, and again, that dumb excuse, <laughs> right? I'm working too much. But yeah. I do, we're, at least we're making the point of what we're doing now, which is that every week I've written, I've written something. Whether a lot of it's been longboarding. Now it's the new longboard that we just got, but like we also have a plan to ride our trikes, which we haven't done yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we have done Swifty rides. So every week we're riding something. Mm-hmm. Even with my, my my niece, I actually went for a ride earlier today. So this is my second ride, by the way, today, and I'm fine. So I do feel that we're committing more to being a bit more active. Mm-hmm. But the food helps. Oh, yeah. There's no way that I would have the same level of energy if I was just eating standard Canadian diet still. Mm-hmm. I think you could agree with that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. The other thing that comes up a lot is fasting. Do you okay? Do you want to start first with but how the, you incorporate fasting into your life? But that's an interesting topic because twice a year we do a prolonged fast. Like we try to go as long as we as we can. Just that to say that you don't need you don't need to lose weight. You, you're like at goal weight, and and obviously even though you when you're fasting you're you're losing weight. So, so when I fast, it's true that I lose a little bit of weight. One of the interesting things about fasting is that if you do it the right way, so if you do it based on what your body needs rather than doing it to fight with things, so try to fight your way down to a lower weight, you're going to know when to stop fasting and it's going to be well before you lose too much weight. Yeah. So I will say that every time I fasted, I've lost somewhere between three and five pounds. Mm-hmm. And then I put it back really easily because oh, okay. when I go back to eating normally, <clears throat> Like so, you mean? Uh, I'm not trying to be too graphic, but of course, mm. I'm fasting. I'm still eliminating like normal, and all. So like all those processes are still <laughs> happening, so that when you start to eat, you do actually end up holding food in you for a little while. So of course, the, the weight comes back on. So part of it's just me, the fact that I've eaten four or five pounds of food, and so it's there. Mm. And then of course, you just go back to your normal elimination process. So mm. I don't actually worry too much about the three or four pounds I'm going to lose. Um, if I would lose like 10, I'd be, I'd be uh, more concerned because mm. there's no way that I eliminated 10 pounds worth of food yeah, in yeah. a week. In, yeah. Or not even a week because I've never made it a week since being close to goal or at goal. Mm. So I, the max I can fast for is five days. Um, recently, I thought I was going to de- go past the five days just mm. because of the situation that I was in. But I still ended up doing the five days. And also I was working, so I didn't want to push my luck Mm. and like go to work not being able to think um, because obviously I need to think for work. So I did stop uh, the fast at the five-day mark when I noticed that I was starting to feel lethargic. And I'm not usually lethargic on a fast. That's another interesting thing. The symptom that you get is not always the same. Mm. Like usually I get hungry and it doesn't go away. So on a normal day of my fast, like say day two or three or four, I'll get hungry and then like, drink a little bit of coffee or water or something and even by the time I make a coffee or a tea the hunger is gone because at the time it took me to make a coffee or tea my body took a little bit of something when the day that I really do need to eat if I feel hungry by the time I drink that tea I'm still hungry I'll finish the tea and like half an hour later I'm hungry again and like I know okay yeah my body's telling me it's time to eat I've also had occasions where I got a headache it's like okay it's time for me to eat this is the first time I actually got tired like I was okay. tired. Mm, okay. I woke up in the morning and I was tired. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. But I didn't have any other symptom. I yeah. wasn't hungry. I wasn't brain foggy. Like everything else was going good, except I was tired. Mm. And I, I wasn't sure if that was my signal to eat. So what I did is I actually, I went for a walk in the middle of the afternoon, which I normally would do just like, and, but in my walk, I was like, oh no, no, I, I, okay. I didn't even get 10 minutes out and I was tired. I'm like, okay, it, I have to eat this evening. Mm. So luckily for me, I had started to prep my food already. So it was ready for me. Remember that when you do a long fast, it's important to break your fast with liquids. Mm-hmm. So bone broth or some kind of healthy liquid, and then eat something softer like soup or in my case, I did, I did eggs cause they're super mm. soft, but just be careful when you break a fast. Yeah because you don't want to have refeed syndrome. What about your I experience mean, uh, with fasting? It, it was this last time was easier like um, than, than usual. Usual, Usually like uh, after three days, I, I, I think before I never made it to five days. Now, like, now it was the first time I made it to five. Uh, usually it's more at, at four. Although I did like, this last time had uh, a little bit like you where I, I wouldn't say that I felt tired, but it was more like a uh, lack of energy, like feel a bit weak. 
but like it, it passed. Like I think it is, this was around uh, day three, I think made it to five days but like you like you i had like some uh, i did make some bone broth and i had like some some soft meat like uh, just to to restart at day five i don't know i i feel like for those people sometimes we have the comments uh, how do we go back to keto after like uh, stopping or after a while this time i felt like the the fast was like i did i did take it as a reset Maybe, okay. so maybe it's like I don't know if it would be a good a good way to 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 get back like to uh, oh, to, to get back to ke to keto and like it's like a new beginning. It's even if you fast for two days, like even if you don't make it five make it five days, I think it could be a good uh, option for you guys. If like you, if you lost control, you want to get back to keto, just like do a two three days fast and and uh, it's gonna be much easier. Yeah, that's definitely something that I often encourage people mm -hmm. like. We, we need to keep in mind that we shouldn't be forcing ourselves also to fast. Mm. So like just going with what you're saying, if I've been keto and I've been living that life, then pr chances are probably very good if I haven't completely gone back to standard American diet. Mm. <laughs> But you might find yourself like sometimes overeating here or overeating mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So I do a few days of fasting and then when I go back, go back for real. So mm. eat healthy should be what you're thinking. I want to encourage everybody to... Rather than saying, I shouldn't eat that, I can't eat that, that's not good for me. That just makes you want it all the more. It would be better for you to say to yourself, I eat healthy. And then when you're looking at food, do the mental math. Is that healthy? So if I'm looking at a chocolate bar, is that healthy? Mm. And chances yeah. are I shouldn't be eating it. And I'm talking to everybody, even those dark chocolate people. Is that really what I want to be eating if I'm actually hungry? Nuts. Should I be eating that when I'm actually mm. hungry or should I take the 20 minutes and make a meal? Mm. So I'm encouraging everybody, let's stop playing games. And if you're hungry, take the 20 minutes and make a meal. We rounded out this day going to our favorite restaurant. I had a carnival meal. It was spectacular. Comment down below if you like these kind of videos because I think it might be fun for Pat and I to do another one. If you have questions that you want us to answer, that'd be terrific. It will give us something to talk about for the next video. Can't wait to talk to you guys again next week. Have a great rest of your day.